Hello, my name's Tony Ingram, reporting for Walk in the Park. This is uh, September 8th, about 10.30 in the morning, and we're looking at Buttermilk Falls State Park and the effects of Tropical Storm Lee as it is pushed into central New York and dumped many inches of rain. I don't know how much. Well, I was here last night, and uh, Buttermilk Falls was about the same height, but during the night it came up over the uh, stream bank and onto the lawn and dumped a lot of... Uh, logs and trash and other debris from the woods onto the uh, the lawn. Yesterday evening, actually, the flow was a little more intense. Lucifer Falls in Robert H. Freeman State Park was roaring as well. Fishkill Creek next to the old mill in Upper Treman was reminiscent of the great flood of 1935 that tore out the dam and mill pond just upstream. Six Mile Creek comes gushing out of the valley to the southeast of Ithaca right through the city. Fortunately, there are high walls here to keep it from spreading out, but uh, I understood uh, this morning along uh, the um, route through town that uh, some people were evacuated and others were woke up this morning around 6 o'clock or so, warned that there could be flooding in basements and so forth. I'm at Six Mile Creek. It's late in the day on September 8th now, and I am by the um, intersection of Titus, South Titus Street, and Plain Street, bridge over Six Mile Creek. And uh, neighbors here told me that uh, early this morning, the creek, which is obviously very high now, had jumped the banks even and there's a uh, sandbanks over here and it actually had extended beyond that and ripped out this uh, soil and even the concrete slab foundation here of this access ramp into the creek bed so all along the levee along here was the creek came up to it and some places jumped over it This is Tony Ingram on uh, September 8th at Cascadilla Creek, where it comes down into downtown Ithaca. This is the Cascadilla Gorge or Cascadilla Glen during the um, aftermath here of the heavy rains from 
Tropical Storm Lee, and it's quite full as you can see. It looks like it's going over the trail a bit, but there seem to be people still going up there. Now the Cascadilla Glen or Cascadilla Gorge Trail has been closed from Stewart Avenue up to College Town, according to the Cornell Plantations website. And Cornell Plantations is the uh, entity that owns and uh, maintains the Cascadilla Glen Trail. Our gorges tend to amplify and dramatize the power of high water and floods, but they also tend to amplify, magnify the destructive power of the floods in the gorges. So one of the concerns, of course, with all of our lovely gorges around here is how will the trails fare? And uh, regularly during events like this, our trails are ripped out or bridges are washed out or have their stone walls on them taken out, so that sort of thing. So this trail has already been half closed. What will happen to the rest of it? And of course in the state parks like Robert Treeman and Buttermilk Falls State Park, Watkins Glen, what will they look like after this storm? Well, when I woke up this morning, I thought the first order of business was to check out my basement. My basement had about a foot of water in it. So I got the sump pump together and worked on that for two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be filling back up again, but at least I got the first, the first influx outfluxed. And then I decided to take my bike around. I went over to Cascadilla Creek by the old PNC, and where we usually put a canoe in, the water's up several feet above that. And then I took my bike over to, to Ithaca Falls, and a whole lot of people were interested in what they saw there, and so was I. It was just roaring. Uh, I was going to go down and get closer because of all the trees being full. I couldn't see the whole right. fall, so I started walking down. But as soon as I got down to the bottom, there was a, the, the, the stream had, had expanded so much that I couldn't get any further than that. Of course, all this water that's flowing out through the gorges and gushing across town has to go somewhere, and that, of course, is Cayuga Lake. So you can see behind me, there's lots of uh, flotsam and debris, logs, garbage, all kinds of things that have been washed down from our gorges, our streams, and so forth, out into the lake here. And this is where it will, some of it will settle, the mud and so forth, eventually, and actually extend the shoreline over a long period of time and others of it will float around the lake for a while and the big debris and so forth can be hazard for boats but there's a lot of stuff we can't see that's in the water that comes out of our gorges and creeks and so forth things like runoff from parking lots and roofs and roads and uh, the chemicals that come off of automobiles and, and industrial facilities and lawn chemicals and septic systems and uh, sewage treatment plants lots and lots of uh, storm sewers Lots and lots of different sources of uh, point and non-point source pollution, as they call it, that can get into Cayuga Lake. And the south end of Cayuga Lake here is really not the best quality water in the lake. Farther up, the water quality is better. But uh, this, times like these are, are times that we need to remind us that uh, what goes on in our watershed, what goes on, on on our land, eventually will affect the lake and eventually may even get into the lake. This is Tony Ingram reporting from Stewart Park, Ithaca, New York. Flooded.